The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648 or internationally at 727 445 1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning from TFNN. Welcome to the May 14th, terrific Thursday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there had a wonderful Wednesday. Let's make sure that you and I do everything we can to have a terrific Thursday, an extraordinary day. Of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right, that one little two-by-four shift out there makes all the difference in the world because it means that you and I, we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, we're going to look at the circumstances of the markets. We're going to go see what the bulls and the bears are throwing out to you and I. And uh, you can absolutely give me a call and tell me what you're seeing. You know, I'm totally grateful, absolutely grateful for your presence here this morning. I am each and every day, so thanks for tuning in. I'm here to serve you, so feel free to call in at 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, you can reach out to us, reach out and touch someone at 727-445-1044. This is TFNN. Of course, it's terrific Thursday. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow futures up 114 points, trading at 18,129. S&P futures up 12 and a half points at 2107. NASDAQ futures up 34 points. They're trading at 4458. Russell's up six points, trading at 1235. U.S. dollar index back 283 ticks or so, trading out at 93.34. Gold doing nothing. Silver up 10 cents, trading at 17.32. Gold's trading at 12.18, by the way. Light sweet crude back 11 cents, so commodities are relatively calm this morning. Even with the U.S. dollar index being back, of course, if the U.S. dollar index is back, what does that say about your friend and mine, the euro? The euro is actually trying to break out of that descending price channel. We'll see what the end of the day holds for us, but, uh, you know, we'll take a look at that for sure. Let's take a quick peek across the globe out here. What we're going to see is over in Europe. Let's start over in Europe. Let's take a look at the DAX. The DAX is up 121 points right now. That's up 1%. Now, actually, I'm going to switch over to this other page here because this other page is going to show you exactly what the DAX is doing out here. Uh, just as we were coming on the air, I was, uh, I'd punch this up on my screen. So let me just finish this for you here. We're just going to change the colors of this uh, subcorrection channel that the uh, DAX is in as we speak right now. And if we take a look at the uh, DAX, there we go. Let's pull this back a little bit further. Let's pull this back a lot further on my chart out here. Let's do it just so we can make sure that we're looking at the right thing out here. Here's what we know about the DAX. Number one, the DAX has, I'd have to go back really far, but the DAX has broken through a uh, a consolidation that was up. What the heck is, what does that, what what does this system, what did this actually do here? There we go. Well, actually, let me, let me do this. If we're going to tell the story of the DAX, we really got to tell the story. Okay, here, here we go. Now, this is the story of the uh, DAX. It has been traveling in a 19-year, about 6,000-point consolidation. From uh, bottom to top or top to bottom, let's go top to bottom, 8136 down to 2266. Now, when any pattern, when anything you're trading, it doesn't matter what time frame the chart is, doesn't matter what the actual chart is, it could be a commodity, it could be an indice, it could be an ETF, it could be a stock. When you break through a consolidation, the measured move is equal to or greater than the consolidation. This case here, it says that at some point in time, the DAX wants to make its way up to 15,800. Okay, great. Now, we also have this little rising price channel. I do mean rising price channel. It's the one that began back in late uh, September 2014. These are the yellow lines going across my screen. We're going to go ahead and switch this now over to the uh, daily chart just so we can fast forward. And the DAX, by the way, this so far the high has been uh, 12,388. So when its work is done to the downside, which at this stage here, our target to the downside, needs to be the bottom of this rising price channel. It should be. It doesn't need to be. It can be anything you want. But I'm going to go with the bottom of this rising price channel. We know that price has been traveling in this directional, what's referred to as a, a subcorrection channel. It is a, just simply a decline with inside this rising price channel. So it would make sense that somewhere around the intersection 
of uh, the John Lodge and uh, Seven Mile Road. i uh, just kidding you. Those are for some Detroiters out there. Uh, oh, by the way, congratulations to those uh, New York Rangers. Let's go Rangers. Uh, of course, taking it to a uh, overtime, uh, which uh, Stevie was not that happy with, you know, because overtime took place. What, they didn't get to, what's it? Uh, well, I guess, I guess it wasn't too bad. The game was over at 11 o'clock. But um, in any event, out here, if we take a look at uh, price moving down, uh, price should move down to about the 11095 ish type area. We'll see if it finds support there. I would say because of this nice uh, uptrend that it's in, it most likely uh, will. Even, so even though you've got a, uh, what, a, what did I say, 100-point move, 120-point move, a 1% move in the DAX, up 120 points right now, it's really just a little bit of a counter-trend move. It still has further to go to the downside. Is that, at least that's the way that it looks like to me. If we look at the uh, FTSE out here, the FTSE, what you and I know the FTSE is just doing, it's just dancing around the uh, the. The high wire act that's doing the high wire act at 69.50.60. It's trading at 69.65.32. Uh, it's trying to stay on that high wire, which is the uh, 1999 consolidation high in it. If it can manage to continue to close above that, it's got a quite a move to the upside over the long haul. Long haul. That's what we're talking about here. Now, let's go take a look at what took place over in Asia last night. We had the uh, Shanghai, the Shanghai uh, flat. It's up two points. We don't really even need to take a look at it, but we'll just punch that up on our, our chart out here. What do we know about this? Just simply consolidating. Uh, it's really just trying to wind up its engine to be able to take out the 4791.53 level out there. At least that's what it looks like it's doing as we speak right now. The Hang Seng up 37 points, about uh, a little over a tenth of a percent, just working up uh, over uh, bought uh, condition out here by moving sideways to just slightly lower. Nothing bearish about the uh, Hang Seng. If we take a look at the Nikkei, down 200 points last night. That was off, what, one and how much What was percent? That was down about 1% last night. What was it doing? Not a lot. Really not a lot. It was an inside day, quite frankly. Uh, so it just wanted to see what the uh, European and the U.S. markets were doing here. Just simply took a time off, a little, little time off, just really consolidating up at the highs out here. Um, and working off an overbought condition. Okay, so that's what's going on in those markets. Now let's go check out what's going on in our markets out here. Are they going, are they headed to the moon? Uh, no, not exactly. Uh, if we take a look at the, um, let's go look at the daily contracts out. Let's, look, let's go ahead and take a look at each one and try and get a feel for what's happening. Let's start with the Dow, right? The Dow is up, what I say, about 115, 120 points, something like that. Here's the Dow. It has its own little consolidation. And that consolidation level, you know, I'm calling it about 18,167. It can be anywhere between the 18,150 area. Uh, 18,155 happens to be a brand new uh, Taz market profile box out there. So 18,150 all the way up to a high of, well, let me uh, turn that on. Come on. Wow, that's weird. Ooh, data window. There we go. Uh, to a high of the uh, session from March 2nd. 18,188. So that is the consolidation. In order for the uh, Dow, in order for this move here, um, which is uh, doing nothing more than just simply trying to bounce its head up in the top of that consolidation. In order for this to truly break out, we're going to need to see a close above that 18,188 uh, level. So this is just still in its a consolidation phase out here. So nothing really to get excited about. The NASDAQ really doing the same thing. We take a look at the larger picture on the NASDAQ. It's consolidation, which it did break through. It did crack through. It cracked through that back on April 23rd, had some follow through on that very next session, the 24th, and even a bit higher high on April 27th. But then price came all the way back into the consolidation, found support at its uh, TAS market profile low, that little green horizontal line going across my screen. Remember, the wick of the candle is nothing more than the extreme emotions of the intraday movements of whatever it is that you're trading, whatever time frame. In this case here, the essence of price is truly the body of the candle. The body of the candle, in this case here, inside the NASDAQ, found support at that level of 43.70. Now it looks like we're going to see a test of at least the high, 44.63 to maybe 44. 73 close above 44.73 and the sphincter muscle of any shorts has got to tighten up just a, a tad out there uh, if we take a look at the s p futures out here the es mini again traveling in its consolidation box out here somewhere between the 2033 to 2109 ish area right now you're trading at 2106.75 we've been up here we've been moving sideways consolidating for quite some time if we take a look at the russell 2000 by the way russell 2000 weaker than the others the others are trying to uh you know trying to take out the consolidation highs russell 2000 really only up to that uh, point of control area that's that light blue line going across my screen where buyers and sellers 
sellers are just simply the most comfortable. So the uh, weaker of all four is most certainly the Russell 2000 at this stage. The divergence there is that the Russell 2000 has actually tested its swing point low with lighter volume out here. And if we take a look at that, no, no better picture of that than as we take a look at the Russell 2000, the IWM ETF out here. That IWM uh, swing point that we're taking a look at is March the 10th, which had 32 million shares, was tested three times with volume, couldn't bust them down, and then finally was tested with light volume. That was on the trading day of May the 7th. 29 million shares, was going against 32 million shares, couldn't bust them down, says it wants to bust them up. In the case of the IWM, it's moved to bust them up, would take into the 125.66 level. It ought to at least be able to do that, but here's the problem. If the other markets are not going to be able, meaning the Dow, meaning the NASDAQ, meaning the ES, are not going to be able to bust through their highs, uh, there's no way one should be thinking that the uh, Russell 2000 is going to even be able to get up to that 125.66 level. Well, we'll see. There's a lot of time you know, left in the trading session. Really, the cash markets, they haven't really opened. We've got 13 minutes to go there. Let's take a look at what is also moving in the marketplace out here, and that is the euro versus the U.S. dollar index out. U.S. dollar. If we take a look at the, uh, if we take a look at this pattern, what you and I have been watching here for quite some time is the descending price channel inside of the uh, euro, and that is held as a level of uh, resistance. Uh, well, that level of resistance actually began back in the uh, July 2014 timeframe. So we've been in it. For nearly a year out there, you know, call it uh, 10 months, call it what it is. But today we are seeing a breakout of that area. Now, if this is truly a now, what that says is that, and you've got the euro priced at 114.13, the day's not over. All right, so it's broken out above. Anything can happen out here. But trading desks around the world ought to be watching this. Heck, trading desks around the world ought to be watching the mere fact that we've got a uh, price move that is above the May 7th high, which is at 113.91. You're at 114. What this says is if this is a real breakout here, that the uh, euro could easily make its way up into the 117 level. So what you like to see, you like to see a day or two stay above, come back and test that area, reject it, and then continue to move higher out there. That would be the signal that the euro would be moving to the 114 level. Does it have to come back and test that area? The answer is absolutely not. It most certainly does not need to uh, do that out there. So uh, I will be paying attention to it. If we take a look at the uh, Great British Pound, the Great British Pound up slightly again. We know we've got a nice A to B equals CD pattern out here. She's headed to 160 and then headed to 163 before it is likely done with its move. That doesn't mean that we won't see some jostling around. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days up in a row out there. Uh, if we take a look back here and see if we can find another move like that inside of the Great British Pound, uh, there is nothing that shows up on our radar screen. Uh, that has eight days up in a row for the Great British Pound. Does that mean that it's going to stop? No, that's not what it means. It means it's got an A to B equals CD, and it will at some point in time complete it. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Do you know the seven most critical factors that influence every decision you make and how not knowing these will jeopardize the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve? I'm Steve Rhodes, morning host at TFNN.com, and for the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets of human growth, the same formulas used by leaders of nations, billionaires and millionaires, and the most successful athletes on the planet. Would you like to break through any obstacle that gets in between you and the success you deserve? Would you like to turn fear into strength? If you could find a way to achieve, be fulfilled, and live a life of meaning, wouldn't you want to know the answer? I'll teach you the factors that control your state of mind and the drivers that impact every thought, emotion, behavior, and action we take in my new webinar, The Psychology of Trading. Join me for this two-part online event where I'll unveil the secrets to human pattern recognition because they're not what you think. And soon, you'll have the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on The Psychology of Trading to begin your journey now. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. 
As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, boy, if ever there's going to be an expensive uh, ticket or set of tickets, it's going to be the uh, Rangers in uh, Tampa. I believe the game one is Friday night, if I'm not mistaken, out there. Um, and, uh, you know, the two, the two most difficult hockey tickets to get uh, as far as uh, in Tampa Bay are when either Detroit is in town because, you know, Florida is kind of like Michigan's lower peninsula, as well as uh, New York. Uh, those are the two toughest. And I'd have to say even New York is a little bit more difficult, especially these days here. Uh, I was looking at ticket prices uh, last night for reasonable seats. You know, and they were like, I think, right around 800 bucks or so a ticket. So I think the uh, lazy boy uh, with a, uh, with a uh, Corona would be the uh, best seat in the house uh, as opposed to uh, paying that kind of money to uh, go see that hockey game. But it'll be a great game, I'm sure. Now, question in the uh, Tigers' den out here. Question was, let me see here, says, uh, what do you make of the fact that the ES Mini is at 2107? At 2107 is under the Epigee pivot point. Um, so what's being referred to there, let me pull up um, Let me pull up this chart here, the 120-minute time frame chart here for the ES Mini. This is a blue horizontal line going across my screen out here. That happened to be the Apogee pivot point, which came in a couple of weeks ago. And that uh, price point was at uh, 2109. Price is below that. I um, what it means to me is price is just really up against a uh, a significant level of uh, resistance out here. But tonight is when the next real pivot point comes in. Tonight is the uh, next uh, perigee lunar phase. Now that's going to come in at 7:09 p.m. Let me make sure. So. See, even a CPA needs to use his digits, his fingers and thumbs to actually count. So at 7.09 p.m. exactly is when the moon during this phase is going to be the closest to Earth out there. 
And so I think that it is this evening's, um, you know, as we kind of transition, it's really this evening's uh, point that's going to be the level to be watching inside of the market. So I hope that that helps answer the question inside our wonderful Tiger's Den. Hey, as long as we're at the 120-minute uh, time frame chart out here, you know, this showed the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD to the downside. And then we had all those patterns that were converging at one point in time. So let's go ahead and get rid of that uh, pattern out here. Um, so that's no longer on here. Where where are we at at this stage here? You know, if we take a look at uh, wave counts to the downside, we're in that uh, fifth wave to the upside. We're coming into a resistance level here. Um, you know, pretty good, pretty good uh, point in time for the ES Mini to really find a resting spot and not do a whole heck of a lot. Doesn't mean that that's what it's going to do, because if, in fact, the ES Mini is able to take out the high here, let me get my uh, crosshair out here. If it's able to take out this high from uh, 12 noon, that was back on. No, don't do that to me. We're on television. You're you're, you're part of my team here. Uh, this was at uh, 21 13 50. I'm referring to my chart. Uh, you're part of my team as well. If you're listening, in. 21 tw 21 13 50 is going to be a key area to watch because if that gets taken out, then what we actually have we had an A to B equals CD to the downside. There is no reason then to believe that this would be anything other than an A to B equals CD to the upside. And if that's the case, that's going to give you a price projection 21 35. That's another you know what uh, 30 points. Or or so to the upside inside of the ES Mini. I don't think that's what's going to happen, uh, but who cares what I think? We're going to go watch what the market does. We know we're going to be able to watch for some specific uh, price points in order to be able to uh, make that decision out there. So that's what's going on inside of the ES Mini. Uh, we took a look quickly at uh, currency pairs. I took a look at the pound, the euro. Let's go take a look at the Japanese yen. Let's see what we have going on out here. Japanese yen continuing to really just consolidate here, pulling back a bit, um, but not doing anything uh, more than uh, that. So it's really the uh, weakness that we're seeing inside the U.S. dollar index coming from the euro. Coming from the uh, pound out there, the end is taking a little bit away from that. Um, uh, you know, we go take uh, maybe what I'll do is uh, tomorrow or something. I'll go ahead and just simply create a currency page. I don't want to. I don't want to wait. And well, that way, we can look at all six currencies inside the U.S. dollar index. We, that way, I don't have to leave out the loony, the Canadian dollar out there, which is important for us to take a look at what's going on inside the loony, anyways. Just simply because of its correlation to the price of oil. So, if you're an oil trader out there, you might be thinking that you're trading oil. When in reality, what you're really trading out there is the uh, loony. If we take a look at that, I can show you exactly what I'm referring to. The top portion of this chart here is light sweet crude. The center, uh, the uh, next panel down, panel number two, is the loony, is the U.S. dollar, U.S. versus the Canadian dollar out here. Uh, the bottom, the second, uh, the third panel down. I'll get there. The third panel down is the uh, Mexican peso, and the last one is the U.S. dollar index out here. The, uh, the you know, Canada is a as a producer of, of oil as well, but it's the Canadian dollar that has just this extraordinary correlation to what is going on inside of the oil market. So I just suggest that if you do trade light sweet crude, you might want to get access to what's going on at least inside those two currency pairs as well because uh, they have a really, really good correlation as to what's going on with black gold Texas tea. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Thanks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. 
and he publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank as a member FDIC and equal housing lender who says you can't take it with you TFNN says you can with your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands no special apps to download no subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams we say you can. Each and every time that the dollar ticks higher, S&P wants higher price. Each and every time that the dollar is ticking lower, guess what? S&P wants lower price. Dollar, the metals, and the S&P are going tick for tick. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We're off to the races. We got the Dow up 122 points, straight at 18,181. S&P is up 12 at 2110. Composite up 33 points at 5,014. Russell 2,000 up 4 points at 1236. DAX up 114. FTSE up 7 bucks. Gold's up $3. Silver's up 17 cents. Lightspeed crude back 14 cents. Leading the charge the upside. It is ctrip.com. Uh, that is up $8.7, 13% this morning. Netty's up $8.50. Shake Shack up six bucks. You've got uh, vascular biogenics up uh, fifty five percent. That's two bucks though. IBM's up a buck fifty seven. Apple's up a buck forty five. Boeing's up a buck forty. Monsanto's up a buck thirty six. To the downside, Puma. Oh man, Puma's Puma Biotech exploding to the uh, downside, down thirty six bucks off seventeen percent. Kohl's uh, down about ten percent, down seven bucks. Kansas City Southern, that's off uh, about four percent. Four bucks. Digital Ally off three dollars. Target Target down two bucks. Harley Davidson, the hog, off a buck seventy three. Um, and a couple other things moving to the downside. Let's go check in on uh, some of these uh, stocks out here. Let's go check uh, C Trip, moving to the upside. Let's go check uh, C Trip dot com. That's up 13 percent. Uh, looks like they may be out with uh, numbers out here. Let's see. What did they do? What did they do? Um, I can't see what the actual numbers are, but nonetheless, let's go check it out. So C trip gapping up big time this morning. Um, so that's a wide ranging bar to say the uh, lease out here. Now C trip did a one to one A to B equals CD to the downside, which it completed back on December 17th at a price point of forty dollars and seventy four cents out there. Since then, let's go ahead and get rid of that A to B equals CD to the uh, downside. There we go. I'm going to try to. 
man, system is, there we go. Uh, but then what the C-Trip did was just really consolidated at the uh, lows out there, then had a huge sign of strength after an earnings release. So this was the previous earnings release back on uh, March the 20th. This had 22 million shares to the upside. Big, wide-ranging bar out there. Never even came back to test the bottom of that price level, 55 bucks even, Stephen. Instead, just simply continued to uh, motor its way higher um, and uh, now could actually be forming an A to B equals CD to the upside. And if it is, uh, well, it is, really. What do you mean, maybe? What the, what the heck is that? Not just maybe, it is. And uh, that A to B equals CD pattern, well, you know, would look something perhaps like this inside the C trip. Uh, move to 86.49, maybe $93.12 out here. Now let's put this on a uh, weekly chart out here so we can take a, a peek at it. So, you know, this thing is at all-time highs. So how about that? Let me pull this back in further just to make sure. Yeah, it most certainly is. So, you know, what it's doing, this is a weekly chart out here. Now, the weekly swing point had 7 million shares. You've done 11. Wow, this is a weekly. Let's take a look at the weekly A to B equals C. That's probably going to give you the better price projection out here for C trip. And that's going to give us a uh, price projection. So it's already done the one-to-one. -one. So you move it into the one-to-one -one with a wide-ranging bar out there. And that says that what C-Trip ought to do is move up to the 8370 area. I would use that more as a target guide than I would what we looked at on the uh, daily uh, chart out there. CTR, CTRP is the uh, ticker symbol out there. Uh, NetEase, N-T-E-S is the ticker symbol. That's uh, up about 8 bucks right now, 6%. Let's take a look at it. This two at all-time highs. This had taken out a weekly swing point from February 2nd. With that had 2 million shares. It's been taken out with 4.2 million shares. So that's got a large A to B equals CD to the upside out there on the weekly basis. That, by the way, is uh, says that this equity here wants to run to a price level of 149.72, 164.83. Looks like that's what its target is. I think the latter more likely the case. NTES is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, Shake Shack. Let's go take a look at Shake Shack. S H A K is the uh, ticker symbol. Uh, certainly, we can't look at this on a weekly basis out here. Let's go take a look at it on a, a daily basis. Another food stock here. You know, approaching its highs. Uh, it's dealing right now with a, a swing point, uh, which would set up the first day to be equal CD to the upside if it could take out the high from May 6 out there. At 79.50, uh, that had volume of 709,000 shares. It's done 574 to speak of right now. That is Shake Shack. We've got uh, Vascular Biogenics, BBLT is the uh, ticker symbol. That's up 64%, up $2.66 out here on a, a positive news from one of their phase one or two uh, trials out here. Now, what this is doing, ugh, this, looks, this is... So, I, you know, I don't know how to tell you how to trade this. This looks like a uh, reverse... I mean, there's no no shares really being traded here. I, I can't tell you about that. I don't know about the shell of this organization or anything like that. So we won't even spend any time on uh, VBLT because I can't give any good information. So why spend any time there? But let's go take a look at uh, Puma Biotech. PBYA is the uh, ticker symbol. 3481 is what it's trading at to the downside out here. It's uh, trading right back into its most recent swing point from May the 5th. That only had 731,000 shares. You're trading down into it 500,000 shares as we speak right now. Let's pull this back a bit. Oh, man, nasty. So what uh, Puma Biotech could be doing, now this would be the buy of the century if it really ever did it. I don't think it's going to do it. I don't think it's going to come all the way back to the breakout from July 22nd, 2014 at a price level of uh, 58.46. So go ahead, prove me wrong, because that could be a buy of the uh, cent. That could really be coming back to a breakout area with light volume out there. Um, right now, it's uh, trading below that uh, breakout or the swing point a few days after that, which was at uh, 189.30. So it makes it very difficult to really assess what Puma Biotech is doing. One way we can take a look at it as far as patterns are concerned, we can take a look at price projection tool of the A to B equals CD to the downside pattern out here. Uh, that's going to give you a price projection of uh, 156.38 to 130 to 96 bucks. I'd have to say 156.38, probably a pretty decent area for Puma Biotech to try to find some support out there. But we're inside the middle of this gap, so it's really it's an unknown factor out there. PBYI is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's look at the uh, Kohl's, KSS, keep it simple. Stevo, and as we take a look at uh, Kohl's, it's down about uh, ten percent. That's off seven dollars and change out there. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? You thought I was going to use that traditional uh, kiss theory out there. 
But no, I can't do that. That would not be uh, that would not be appropriate. In the case of uh, Coles, it's got a, a nice wide-ranging bar and breakout that took place on uh, February the uh, 4th out here. You can see prices come down into the top of that breakout level, which was at 67.15. It's trading at 67.41, but it's gapping down into that area here. Pretty darn good volume because the breakout had 11 million shares. Coles has done 5 million shares in 11 minutes of trading. I would say that uh, this thing, Coles, if you were a person that wanted to buy Coles, you'd be looking at somewhere between the 62.99 to the uh, 59.63 area, assuming that it can come back on much lighter volume as it closes and repairs that gap. That window comes back to its breakout area. KSS being the uh, ticker symbol. Let's take a look at uh, Kansas City Southern KSU being the ticker symbol there. Um, and if we take a look at it, it gapped down here this morning. It only gapped number two. I don't see a third gap, a three-gap play to the downside. This is coming back into a, a swing point from uh, that had some good volume back on February 18th. That was volume of 6.4 uh, million shares. You've done 628,000. Uh, as we speak today, the low of that swing is 88.56. Pretty good chance 88.56 gets tagged, tested, and perhaps rejected. If we take a look at Jack in the Box, uh, J-A-C-K is the ticker symbol. I can count on no hands how many times I've eaten at Jack in the Box out there. Um, of course, I don't think that they really have Jack in the Boxes down here in Florida. But if they do, uh, steve is not going to one of them. And, hey, I'm not out here to, I, how, can I, how can I say that it's a bad place? Look, food stocks are the things that are on fire out here. Maybe if something is ever going to take a fall inside some uh, market uh, correction, there's going to be a move out of food stocks out here. Hey, Jack in the Box trading up at $88.67. Do you eat a Jack in the Box? What do you even get at Jack in the Box out there? In any event, what Jack in the Box is doing here on the daily charts is moving back into its most recent swing point. Now, Jack in the Box had broken out back on uh, cheap burgers. Hmm. Yeah, you got to be careful what's in those cheap burgers out there. But if we take a look at Jack in the Box, it broke out. Nice wide-ranging bar on February 18th, 3.5 million shares to the upside. Price came back and tested that with 979,000 shares on May Day out here, on May 1st. Well, uh, just a, a slight uh, retracement. Looks like a, a clear descending price channel that it's in. And it's going to come back and test that 85.53 one more time. And if it can break through that level, well, Jack in the Box could ease. I can easily make the case. Jack in the Box comes back to 71. 175 out there and that is for ticker symbol j a c k my apology to offend any of you that like jack in the box what do i know i don't eat there in any event uh let's take a look at uh, but you know i've gone over to uh i'm not that uh, fond of uh, those uh food chains out those fast food chains out there you know i've tried uh what's the one what's the uh oh you know chipotle which took me about a year to figure out how to actually say the name out there. You'd be amazed at the what I used to call it as I drove by and looked at the sign. You know, I mean, it was definitely not Chipotle out there. That just means I don't uh, cook with those peppers as well, huh? In any event, uh, I've eaten there, and I'm kind of like, are you kidding me? Really? In any event, out here. Um, so there. So I now just took care of offending pretty much everybody. Oh, somebody's thrown out five guys, which is really you don't go there for burgers, do you? you just go there to get a sack of potatoes. Sack of potatoes. In any event, let's get back to uh, stocks out here. Let's see. Tar J. Let's go take a look at uh, Target. TGT is the uh, ticker symbol. That's uh, down about 3% out here. This is gap down this morning. If we take a look at it, what is it doing? You know, Target's got a, a sign of strength out here all the way back at the price level of uh, 67.76 to 69.95 out there. Looks like that is where Target wants to uh, head to. I don't really see any significant levels of support um, you know maybe the trading day there's a little sign of strength on March 3rd that had about 13 million shares uh, and that's somewhere between 7508 to 7814 that ought to be a decent level of support but cracking through that barrier look at the 67 dollar mark for target to uh, fall back to okay so what else do we want to take a look at here ah gold we got to go take a look at gold and silver. How could I forget my apology for not even taking a look at that with you? Let's go take a look at Goldilocks. 1222, room 222. We're seeing a little bit of follow through here inside of uh, gold. So maybe where I wasn't that impressed uh, yesterday, um, you know, maybe I got to hand it to the uh, gold bugs out here. I'll hand it to the gold bugs when I see it close above 1224.50. Otherwise, otherwise, I am not buying into it. 
Now, nice volume yesterday, no question about it. And we took a look at uh, uh, during uh, the 3 to 4 o'clock hour, one of the things that we did, you and I did, was we took a look at the GDX. So let's go take a look at the GDX out here because inside the gold uh, market vectors ETF, we knew that the GDX was at least coming into the swing point from April 29th, which had 48 million shares, and it was coming into it with 48 million shares. So similar volume yesterday, and that said that it would at least go test the high. The high of that is... $20.90. Hey, guess what? You've gapped above that. You're trading above it. If, in fact, the uh, GDX can uh, get above that, expect uh, close above that, stay above that today, expect it to run into resistance somewhere around 2170 or so. That's the top of this little rising price channel that it is in out there. And if it closes back below 2090 today, does it with less than 48 million shares, guess what? You're going to have a failure at a swing point with light volume. So I would be watching uh, that uh, for sure out there. That's in case of the GDX. Inside of the case, of uh, silver out here, high ho silver. That's trading out at 1738 right now. Of course, we know that silver had uh, made a really large move yesterday. I mean, making its way up to the 1 to 1.272 area with a wide ranging bar. Actually, says uh, silver wants to trade to 1765 out there. Let's go take a look at one of the uh, silver stocks, a couple of silver stocks. Let's go look at a couple of the good silver stocks out here. Not that there's a bad silver stock, but uh, PASS. Let's go take a look at PASS and then Pan American silver out here. That's not uh, right. What was it? P-A-A-S. P-A-A-S. What was I thinking out here? Pan American Silver. Um, uh, and we take a look at it. Let's go get a feel for what it is doing out here. Um, you know, it's broken out of its... Cons nah, it wasn't really a consolidation. It's taken out a, a swing point here from May 5th. 1.2 million shares yesterday was taken out with 3 million shares. Okay, so that's pretty nice volume. So now what is it doing? Well, where's the supply lines inside Pan American Silver out here? The day that it's trading into... A little downdraft of 3.3 million shares. That was 3.3 going against yesterday's 3.1. So, um, and then you've got uh, two and a half million shares that all started the decline back on uh, February 19th. So we'll see if uh, if it can work its way through this area. Uh, it's going to be an area of supply where people are just glad to get their money back. So that's what it's got to really work through. But no reason for uh, Pan American Silver to not get up to 10.69, the 0.618 retracement level of the entire move down off of February 13th to the uh, low. Let's also take a look at not Pan American Silver, but what? Silver Wheat and SLW, another uh, silver stock out here. Let's go take a look at it, see what it is doing. Now, Silver Wheaton uh, has a little bit different uh, chart issue that it's got to contend with. It's got this open window, this downdraft with 8.3 million shares, and yesterday was up with only half of that, about 4.8 million shares, so a little bit more than half. So in the case of Silver Wheaton, it's got some real struggles at 2107. If it can close above 2107, mwah, very good. It will have repaired that window. It will no longer act as resistance. However, this is the first uh, real test of that area. 2107 so far. Interest session high today is 2107. No surprise there. We'll see if it can, in fact, close above that level. If it can't, you know, it's got uh, resistance. It's got supported right now at 2033 and or $19.15. Those are the support levels that you're looking at inside of Silver Wheaton. Uh, right now, we've got the Dow's up 118. S&P is up 10. Composite's up 21. Russell 2000, you know, as we pointed out, just truly a weak, the weaker. The, and that's the interesting thing. The, the IWM tested a swing point low with light volume, but still, that should be, hey, you can't bust them down. I'm going to go ahead and bust them up. But it ain't busting them up. It ain't busting out anything. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus 
prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Do you know the seven most critical factors that influence every decision you make and how not knowing these will jeopardize the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve? I'm Steve Rhodes, morning host at TFNN.com, and for the last quarter of a century, I've studied and used the secrets of human growth, the same formulas used by leaders of nations, billionaires and millionaires, and the most successful athletes on the planet. Would you like to break through any obstacle that gets in between you and the success you deserve? Would you like to turn fear into strength? If you could find a way to achieve, be fulfilled, and live a life of meaning, wouldn't you want to know the answer? I'll teach you the factors that control your state of mind and the drivers that impact every thought, emotion, behavior, and action we take in my new webinar, The Psychology of Trading. Join me for this two-part online event where I'll unveil the secrets to human pattern recognition because they're not what you think. And soon, you'll have the health, the wealth, and the relationships you deserve. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on The Psychology of Trading to begin your journey now. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using headed recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we've got the uh, Dow up 131 points, straight out at 18,192. The S&P is up 11 points at 2109. Composite's up 26. He's trading at 5,007. Russell's up a point and a half at 1233. The DAX is up 123. The FTSE's up 10 points out here. Gold's up four bucks. Silver up 17 pennies. We've got the euro trying to uh, break out to the upside, trying to take out the resistance level of its uh, descending price channel. We'll see if it can do that today or if it's going to get rejected. Don't know the answer to that. We just know that it's up against some stiff levels of resistance out there. Uh, of course, as a result of the euro, which is the numinator on the euro, euro Japanese yen currency pair, uh, that moved uh, higher. And therefore, the liquidity gauge, one of the liquidity gauges was saying plenty of money to slosh around. And that is why futures were up so strongly earlier this morning. Of course, obviously, they're still up uh, fairly strongly as we speak right now. We're seeing a bit of a give back on the uh, daily chart here for the euro Japanese yen. If I go take a look at a, a short-term chart, a 30-minute chart. Maybe there's some pattern that completed out there intraday. I don't know. 
Let's see. Here's here's we had a real nice breakout. This wide ranging bar right here. I would expect that this is where the Euro Japanese yen will fall back to. And we'll see if it can find support at 135.05 out here. That little wide ranging bar. That's the top of it. The uh, bottom of that bar is 134.24 out there. And that's what's going on inside that uh, currency pair. As far as uh, who's got control of the uh, ball as of uh, 9.55 a.m., let's take a look at what's going on inside the price oscillators for the uh, next. NASDAQ for the New York Stock Exchange and the Dow. Look, the Dow, we don't have to worry about. It's been the bulls that have been in control there. That says that the Dow really wants to uh, test the highs out here, those highs from March the uh, 2nd. Right now, today, if uh, price were to close right now, if this was the 4 p.m. close, I would tell you the bulls, the buyers absolutely have control of the ball because those price oscillators for the New York Stock Exchange and the compositor just above zero. Failure to stay above that today will be another failed attempt by the buyers out there. So, folks, if you're off to start your Thursday, uh, stay tuned. Tom O'Brien, I believe, is going to be back up with his uh, market uh, minute. And then Steve O'Son, I'll be back at about 10 after with the uh, second hour of the Trader's Edge. Don't forget this evening is the psychology of trading workshop number two um so hopefully you're signed up for that because it's going to be another extraordinary course have a great day folks